So our first chapter is on systems of linear equations and matrices. And our first section that I'm going to do today is introduction to linear systems. I am breaking this video up to two or three parts, so it's not so long. Definitely you can pause and work the problem out because I don't give you time on the video to do that. And that's a great idea to follow along. So in two space, and a linear equation is just ax plus by equals c. You might see it as y equals mx plus b. It's just another form of a linear equation. And so we call that R2 because there's two unknowns. Our solutions to this linear equation are um, what fits in for x and y are ordered pairs. And we can see there's an infinite number of ordered pairs that satisfy just one linear equation. That makes up all the points on the line. So in three space, we have x, y, and z. Um, a lot of this is covered in Calc 3. And we can go all the way up to n space. And we will a lot in this class. Now, when we go to Rn, we're not gonna use x, y, z, w, and so forth. So we start subscripting them, the variables. So we'll do a1. So we subscript our first variable is x1, our second variable is x2 instead of y, and so forth. And so we go ahead and subscript the coefficients too. And we can just use the next letter for our constant over there. And this, of course, fits all of the cases. And again, just to remind you, this is just easier when it's unlimited. We can still use this notation for R2 and R3. It's not a problem. And we call our solution. So there's many forms of this uh, linear equation in Rn. So let's write some out. So our first is a series, series notation that adds them up. So it's a i x i, your subscript is i equals, we'll start with one since that's what we started with right here. And it'll go to n. And then that's equal to on the right side is b. Our second form is a dot product, vectors, and let's scooch that over. So the, that's my left side, and that's equal to B. So remember the dot product, it's this first one times this first one, plus the second one times the second one, and then they've got to be the same number all the way to AN times XN. This is a row vector, which is one row by n elements. Goes all the way up to n, one, two to n. And this is column matrix. There are n rows times one column. And when we multiply these two matrices, we get a one by one vector, which is just a constant. I do want to point out, so I'm pointing out what we'll see in this section. I'm pointing out a lot of properties that are coming up that I'll uh, make more formal when I teach you. But we couldn't do it like this because this would be an n by 1. You can multiply it, but it's not, this, it's not the same. This is a 1 by n. And then when you multiply these, these have to be the same. We get an n by n and rows and columns, and that's not the same representation of that. It is not this. So let's look at our linear systems of equations now. Linear systems have two unknowns in R2.
So here we actually have two equations, two unknowns. Two equations and two unknowns, x and y. So to find these solutions, we're, when we're in two space, or two, the solutions are where the lines intersect. And this is just algebra one, but it's really um, helpful to understand what's going on looking at what we already know. So the most common type of solution So we can see if we have two lines, two equations, they most likely intersect at one point, and that point will be at x, y. So my solution is the set x, y, and this is called consistent. The second thing that can happen is we have two lines that are parallel, and we can see the solutions are where the lines intersect, parallel lines never intersect, so my solution is the empty set, and this is inconsistent. The last thing that can happen with two equations and two unknowns is that they're also parallel, but it's also the same line. A lot of times they are disguised, one's a multiple of the other, but here our solution is all the points on the line. It's an infinite solution. So we write it as, oops, it is an ordered pair. So my x can be anything. And my y, let's say this y is mx plus b. If you solve the equation for y, so my y is mx plus b. That's my y. y depends on x. And it's an infinite solutions. And this is actually consistent because it has solutions. So in three space, it's really the intersection of planes. So I'm not very good at drawing planes in 3D. This is much prettier. So these are all the no solutions. We have three planes that are parallel. So it's no solutions, three parallel planes. We have two parallel planes and no common intersection. We can see one, two of them are parallel, and then one, there's no common intersection for all three. Again, they could all be crossing, but never crossing in the same spot. So just again, um, we could even have two of them are the same plane and one of them is different, so they're parallel. There's not any place that all three of them intersect still. So there's all the no solutions and all the new, no solutions are inconsistent. And here we can see right there, there's that dot right there, that all three of the planes intersect at one point. So the intersection there, my solution is x, y, z is my solution. And here we have infinite infinitely many solutions because this right here is my solution. So there's infinitely and it's still consistent. We have all three are the same plane. Again, that has, the solution is the entire plane. This, this one right here. And then here we have another line that intersects the planes. Two of the planes are the same and one intersection is a line. And on all of these, there's infinite solutions and they are all consistent. This is consistent. Here's another fact. So this is interesting. It has none. We saw where they don't intersect is there's zero solutions. It can have one solution. Here we had one solution. These were all the no solutions or infinite number of solutions. Three cases, and we can see the three cases right here. We have one solution, zero solutions, or infinite solutions. That's in R2 and R3, we had the same. We had many different possibilities for no solutions though. 
many possibilities of infinite, infinite solutions, um, but only one time where there's one solution. And that's true for R4 and all the way to the nth system. I'm going to stop there, and um, we'll do some examples in the next video.